Hey, Emily. Hey, Stephanie. You uh, want to do a podcast? Absolutely. Welcome to Cycle Chats, a podcast to destigmatize what it means to be a woman. This is episode 10, Glow Fitness. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with pre- and postpartum core specialist, personal trainer with a specialty in kinesiology, and owner of Glow Fitness, Amanda King. Amanda, it's an honor to have you on the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So, Amanda, we'll get into this, I'm sure, but you're pregnant, which is amazing. So I'll have many, many questions about that because I think it's really cool that you still exercise while being pregnant. I think that's really cool. And because Steph and I have never been pregnant, I have many questions. And I'm sure many women out there who are pregnant have questions about exercising while being pregnant. But my first question to you is what made you get into this field? Into just exercise in general? Yeah, because I mean, I know for me and probably for other women, because I'm assuming I'm not the only one, exercise is not my favorite thing. I wouldn't want to make a career of it because I'm lazy and my exercise is walking from the couch to the refrigerator mostly. So I think for me, exercise has really came into my life when I was a child And that comes from watching my mom, actually. My mom has been somebody that has struggled with weight loss her whole life and has really tried to exercise and try different diets and stuff like that to try to stay healthy. In our family, there is some risk of diseases and stuff. So that's something that she's always been trying to prevent. And I grew up watching her, you know, trying to stay like motivated and exercising. So I think that's where I started, but I wanted to continue just working on being a healthy version of myself. And so that's why I preach more about lifestyle fitness and just doing what feels good and eating the foods that you love instead of doing fad diets or intense exercises that you're miserable at. There's no point to do something that you don't enjoy. So for me, it's really just about creating a healthy lifestyle and encouraging other women to feel beautiful in their bodies, gain their confidence and have a healthier lifestyle to prevent disease and have a longer, happier life. I think Amanda, you said it, that if you're doing something that you don't like an exercise that you're not comfortable with, of course, it's going to make you not want to do it. So what advice do you give to women through your coaching to allow them to really make that lifestyle change and have it stick instead of fighting against it? So one of the most important things is understanding one, what is your availability to exercise because we all are busy and have these busy lives with a million things going on and we want to get to a certain goal so being able to figure out one how much time you have and then what movements do you really like to do if you like to run then I help them with running and increasing that if they hate running I'm never going to make them run and give them some other form of cardio to do and for resistance training is really important for a lot of women to help tone our muscles and building muscle mass. And then that will help with shedding body fat. And so I give a lot of resistance exercises to women and making sure that they're able to perform those exercises without pain and that they're not doing them at a time of the month where it is not best to do it. For example, if you are menstruating, it's not the best time in the month to try to go hit a personal record known as a PR say that the person is doing a back squat with a barbell on their back you wouldn't want to try to hit your personal record by your on your period because you're already feeling exhausted your body's already like warm and hot already it's just gonna be a lot harder on you so doing more restorative exercises during that time like walking or stretching and yoga is more important than trying to lift like this heavy amount of weight I appreciate that you're saying all this because I know in fitness culture, there tends to be this push of push past your limits and no days off. And I feel that can be very unhealthy for people. So when you're, you know, when you're coaching, it's nice to know that you're looking at it from that perspective, because I don't think a lot of people know that there are different types of training for different 
parts of your phases. It And it really does affect, because I know like when I'm on my period, I tend to want to do something that's a little bit more restorative, more stretching, nothing really heavy because I, I never clicked into that. I'm like, oh, why am I so tired? Well, duh, I'm, I'm menstruating. Obviously, I'm not going to go lift a barbell and try to like get gains. It's not, you end up, I think, doing more damage to your body. So it's nice to know that you're teaching that side of it because I don't think a lot of people know that. Yeah, it's super important. And as a personal trainer, there is not many personal trainers that are aware of the menstrual cycle. And even through college, I would talk about it in class. And a lot of my classmates, they were taken back by the knowledge I was trying to share with them about it because the menstrual cycle changes our whole body and our hormones and things like that. So that's changing how our body uses energy to be able to exercise or just to be able to function in general and the different foods that our body needs at that time. So it's important to take those things into account when having an exercise program. So with my clients, what I like to do with them is be open about talking about periods and when they are having their period for them to let me know. So that way, if they're feeling crampy or really exhausted, we can change their exercises during that week so that they can feel more comfortable and confident in still getting some movement in, but not having to feel like they have to do the strenuous workout that they would normally be able to do just because during that time when you are menstruating, sometimes you just don't have the energy. And some women do. Some women have all the energy in the world and they want to keep pressing through and doing that. And if they're comfortable and they're not having cramps or anything like that, then I encourage them to continue doing what feels good, but to never go ahead and just feel like you have to keep doing things just because and allowing yourself to step back and really relax into that. How's it been since being pregnant? How has that changed the way you do your routines with yourself? So before I was pregnant, I was exercising probably five times a week, weightlifting and doing cardio as well. However, ever since pregnancy, it was like, I don't really know how to explain it, but how tired I was is been so hard. That was the hardest part in the first like two, three months when I first got pregnant. And I literally went from exercising all the time to barely exercising at all. And I was spent most days on the couch and that was hard for me. to go from being so active to complete like rest mode, but it's important to allow your body to rest and recover. And just, I try to enjoy that time as much as possible. However, now that I am in my third trimester and my second trimester, my energy level started to increase. So I started working out a lot more and Currently, I've been working out almost every day for at least 30 minutes. There's some days where I don't work out, but for the most part, I'm doing 30 minutes now, which is really good to be in your third trimester and still like moving around, but it does look a lot different. I am no longer lifting super heavy. I lift just with dumbbells. I kind of stayed away from the barbell and I used to do like lots of barbell squats and front back squats and front squats and deadlifts with the barbell, but now I just don't feel that I can engage my core as well as I could before I was pregnant. And so it's not that I'm not strong enough or that I don't have the energy to go lift it because I do. I just don't feel confident enough in protecting my core and my spine in those movements. So I just try to stick away from that and stay to lighter weights with my workouts. But other than that, I think that's been the biggest change is just decreasing the weight and the intensity and your heart rate tends to increase too a lot when you're pregnant. So it changes when you become pregnant because you have a, a baby to support too. So it's more, a workout is more intense on your body, no matter what kind of workout it is, your heart rate will continue to rise with your workout. So I've tried to just do what feels good. And when I get tired, I get tired and I'll rest versus before I would go for so many repetitions and so many sets. And now it's just whatever feels good is okay with me. And I will rest when I need to rest. You said a few things that I want to touch on. A, the idea of listening to your body, I think is 
so important. And it's something that I don't think a lot of women or even men do sometimes, right? They're like overlook if their body tells them something because they're like, oh, I need to continue to but listen to what your body is telling you because it, it is. It is constantly feeding you information. So if you have a food journal, like I have a food journal so that I can know what foods work for me, what foods don't, all of that. And so I, I love the idea of listening to your body. I, I love that you said that because I think that's so, so huge. Not only just for physical working out, but mentally as well. Listen to your body. Like it's all connected, baby. So if something's hurting, maybe let's focus on something else. The other thing that I love that you said was the time frame. Do you suggest How, on average, what do you tell your clients? How many hours, how many minutes should they be working out a day? So it really just depends on each person individually and what you're capable of doing. So if you're a person that has never worked out like in your life, we're not going to have you start working out 30 minutes every day. And actually, none of my clients are working out 30 minutes every day. It's just not needed. But when I say that I work out 30 minutes a day, it's light exercise. So some days it may be resistance training or maybe going for a walk for 30 minutes or riding like my bicycle or something like that. So it doesn't have to be intense exercise. It could just be walking. But so it does look different for every single client and it really depends on their goal. However, about 150 minutes of exercise a week is the recommended amount of exercise by ACSM for you to help prevent disease. So if you're just going for a walk 30 minutes, five days a week, you're going to already get to that 150 minutes and be a healthier person. So it's all just about moving a little bit more. And it could be, you know, walking around your house or cleaning for 30 minutes, or it could be going grocery shopping and getting your walk in that way. But with my clients, I do also encourage resistance training and stuff like that. But it just depends really on what that client's goal is and where they are at in their fitness journey and what their physical abilities are. Every person's different. And so that's why I create workouts that are tailored to individuals based on their goals, their physical abilities, and also their time that they have in their life to be able to commit to that. Can you fill us in on what ACSM stands for? Yeah, it's American College of Sports Medicine, and you can get your personal training certification through there. They also have a couple other certifications that you can get through them as well. But I have my certified personal trainer certification through them. And I love that you talk about the mental part of it as well, because I find, so I've gone through my own fitness journey. It's been on and off since I was in high school. And I think for the longest time, I looked at it as muscles and abs and look good in a bikini as I got older. And I started to realize that when you have that disconnect and you're not connecting to the mental part of it and almost like the spiritual part of it, you never like what you see in the mirror. I guess the question I'm trying to ask is, do you find there is that heavy disconnect with women on their journey of, of course, we want to shed the weight, but we still have to love ourselves through the process of it. So how do you combat that when you're training? A lot of women that I do work with, and I think it's been every woman that I've worked with has came to me because they are lacking confidence in their body of how they feel it when they are looking at their body. And they really just want to, when they look in the mirror, they want to love their body and feel that confidence. And so in order to get there, you have to one step back and understand why you're not loving your body currently. And two, understanding that your body does a lot for you. So even though that sometimes you may look at yourself and say, well, I don't really like this thing about me, try to think of something positive and say, well, I'm grateful that I could walk today, or I'm grateful that I have vision. A lot of people that have COVID, for example, they've lost their sense of smell or taste. And so it could be as simple as something as that and understanding that these little things that our body does for us is really a huge impact in our life. So finding other ways to love your body other than just its physical appearance will allow you to start loving your body when you are looking at yourself because it's amazing. All of our bodies are different and we all look at ourselves differently. And I think it's 
super important to take that second and step back and look how marvelous and crazy and magnificent that our bodies really are and everything that they can do for us. And then creating exercise programs for them that they, one, can do with confidence, understanding how to do the exercises. Number one, that's so important is proper form with exercise to making sure that you're not injuring yourself and that you are getting the most out of your workout. And then understanding that you don't have to have this crazy intense workout that you feel that you can't complete or that you can't push through it. You don't have to feel that way. So I try to create workouts for women that they can feel accomplished after creating the workout and they aren't to the point where they're like in the middle of the workout crying or hurt or upset that they can't perform a certain exercise. And it's okay. Sometimes we can't. We physically can't do a certain exercise because our bodies aren't as fit as the other person. Or maybe we have a disability of some kind and we can't do that exercise. So I try to create workouts that allow women to be able to complete them with confidence and feel good about that. And over time of constantly completing workouts and feeling good about it, you start to develop more confidence in yourself as a person saying, wow, I can actually accomplish this. I feel good about this. I did my workout and I feel so much better. And then also just going back again and talking about their mental health and how they're really feeling. And that, like I said before, that can change throughout our menstrual cycle and how we're feeling as well. And so just making sure that we're keeping in touch with our feelings and allowing my clients to know that I'm here for them if they need to talk about anything and just being the person that can listen to them and also give them some positive things to step back and think about. And I think that is what helps women build confidence in themselves and love their bodies at the end of the day. So a few things that you talk about is the power of positivity. That's something that we talk about a lot on this podcast, just because I like to think positive. I'm a very positive person. I was never the glasses half empty. I was always glass half full. So if we can think positive about those little things, like you were saying, I think that's so huge and and so important in, in just life, not even just in working out, but just in, in general. If you can take something from your day and be like, hey, I'm really grateful for this, like you were saying, there's such beauty in that to be able to change your own brain and be like, okay, instead of thinking it this way, let's think this way. I think that's really, really great. And I'm so glad that that's part of it for you because I, I think that's what women need, right? We, we get bogged down a lot and we're being told kind of negative things. So the idea of positivity is really important. And something else that I really like that you said is that, you know, you're always there for your clients. I'm a teacher and I always say that I'm a teacher and I'm a therapist, right? I'm always there for my students. If they need to talk, they're going through something, whatever it is, I want to be there. I want them to know that I'm going to be there for them, whatever they have to talk about. If it's awkward, if it's something that maybe they're uncomfortable asking their parents, I want to be there. I want to talk to them. I think that's so beautiful that you feel that connection to your clients. And I'm sure they feel the same way about you. So with my clients, I don't just view them as clients. I view them as people with feelings and emotions. And I love building relationships with them. And a couple of my clients that I've had for three of them, I've had for over a year now, and they have went from just being somebody that was my client to somebody that we are super close friends and they're still training with me. I'm still their coach, but I love to build that relationship with them and connecting with other women because I truly do care about women and want to help women. And that's why I'm here. So I could care less if I help five people or a hundred people, as long as that those are actual relationships and I'm helping change their life in some way. I am so much more happy to work with a small group of women than this massive large group because I think that I can really help them and change their life and be there and listen to the things that they need to talk about. I love that. If we could change one person's life and give them advice, just make them feel less alone, then we've done our job. It doesn't have to be hundreds of thousands of people, but if we reach one person, then I feel like totally complete in 
satisfied in what we're doing. Yes, I totally agree. That's how I feel too. I feel so blessed to be able to do this podcast and to be able to meet people like you and everybody else that we've met. I've felt like our lives have touched and connected and now it becomes this beautiful spider web where it just goes out and continues. And that's the power of femininity. That is the power of being a woman. Something else that I want to talk about is because you are pregnant, you're 30 weeks pregnant, which is absolutely amazing. I'm so excited for you. Being somebody who fitness is so important in your life, how was it seeing your body? body change? So I think it kind of changes like you go through phases throughout because obviously pregnancy is just like one day you're not pregnant and the next day you are and your whole body is just changing. And so at first I was just like super bloated and I was like, what is going on? I can't believe I'm this big already. And then the bloat kind of went away. And then I think it was the second trimester when I really started showing a little bit and I had this little bump and I was like oh my gosh it's so cute I was like looking at myself in the mirror like wow I'm really beautiful and it's very weird because before I I've always kind of looked in the mirror and have loved my body and I am very very blessed and grateful for that because I know that's not the case for many women it's not to say that there's not things that I have struggled with before but for the most part I do really love my body when I look at it but pregnancy has been this whole other like love for my body like wow I'm growing a a little human and it's so cool to see how your body changes and then I started to get you know more and more more pregnant and now I'm to the point where I do still love my body when I look at it but I am super ready to meet my baby (laughs) so it's I think the hardest part has been the struggle of my clothes not fitting that has been the hardest part the first thing was my bras like they didn't fit and then I was worried about my pants and my my shirts and things like that. And that is so stressful when your body is changing. And so I was going online and looking at size chart and trying to understand like what size would I be if I order clothes online? Because I didn't want to go shopping in person because of COVID. So I wanted to order things online, but I didn't even know what to order, what would be the right size, because there's no way that I'm an extra large when I'm typically a small, but I'm pregnant. So I was so confused and I ended up just not ordering any clothes. I just ended up wearing my, most of my husband's clothes. I and thought you were going to say naked, which is also totally fine. <laughs> I did tell him at one point, I may end up that way. For the most part, I think that has been the hardest part is the clothes not fitting, not knowing what size to get. And that's, yeah, that has been the hardest thing is seeing that change and trying to figure out what is going to fit you and how you can go out in public and and look okay and be dressed because you don't want to go out and like everything all out, you know, you want to be a little bit covered up, at least I do. And yeah, that's been the really hardest part. So I was very lucky. One of my friends, she mailed me some of her bras that she no longer needed. And they fit me a little bit better than mine because none of mine fit. But luckily, my husband's shirts fit me. But even underwear is getting to the point where they no longer fit anymore. So I just had to order some like pregnancy underwear off of Amazon. I'm imagining not being able to fit into your clothes every day for months on end to be extremely frustrating when your hormones are literally working overtime. So do you think because you're going through this now, do you think it helps you with your clients? Do you have pregnant clients? Have you had pregnant clients? Can you now relate a bit more? So currently none of my clients are pregnant. However, I did have uh, clients that were postpartum and have worked with them. So that was a little bit different with like their clothes and stuff. But again, teaching them how to do what feels good with exercise and loving their body for the way it is, even though that can be a really hard time because you've never seen your body look that way before and you're not used to that. So I think that has been really hard, but for the most part, most of my clients aren't pregnant. However, 
However, there is one of my clients who is, she was a past client. She's currently pregnant, which is amazing. That was one of her fitness goals was to lose enough weight to actually be able to get pregnant. And we did it. So yeah, that was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> uh, so she's currently pregnant and I, I just talk to her all the time and check in with her to see how she's doing. So I wish that I did have more women that I worked with that currently are pregnant. That would be amazing. But I know that even though that currently I don't, I know in the future, I will. And my experience is definitely going to help me be able to better coach women through pregnancy and understand how they're feeling. I love that manifestation, baby, put it out there and it will come to you. You're going to get those pregnant ladies. Maybe Steph or I will be one of them one day in the future, not now, but in the future. So we're talking about pregnancy. You were talking about working with people that have postpartum. So I know, and I saw on your Instagram that you are a CPT pre slash post natal specialist. Can you kind of go into what that is and how you got into that? So CPT is just certified personal trainer and then pre and postpartum specialist is somebody that can work with pregnant women. So all stages of women really, because the personal trainer certification, you can work with any person, but the pre and postpartum really allow you to understand how to provide exercises with somebody that is pregnant and how to do them safely to protect their core so and to protect their baby so that they don't end up at risk or falling or putting pressure on their or their linea alba, which is the tissue that runs down the center of your abdomen. And through pregnancy, it causes diastasis, which is separation of your core. So it's really important to make sure that when you are exercising, that you are properly engaging your core and also avoiding certain exercises. And then for postpartum, the same thing goes with making sure that you're avoiding certain exercises, but that you're doing ones that aren't too intense at first. Typically, patients have to recover after giving birth and wait for doctor's approval before they return to exercise. And then once you return to exercise after pregnancy, you slowly want to start getting back to working out. And you wouldn't want to just go on to Pinterest and pull up any ab exercise workout and do it because your core is not able to perform that exercise. I mean, other body exercises you would probably be okay with uh, as long as that you can engage your core properly with those, but really making sure that you're protecting your core so that your organs aren't coming out of your body and you're not putting yourself at risk or having prolapse with your uterus or bladder or anything like that. And that's super important as well to engage the pelvic floor muscles of your core and keeping them healthy and strong, but also making sure that they are not too strong. So there's a happy medium there, but the pre and postpartum certification really allows me to better help women more in depth and have more knowledge about what exercises to be able to provide to them to help them to get to where they need to be for their pregnancy journey and being able to deliver their baby in a much more healthier way than having to have weak muscles or muscles that are too strong and aren't allowing them to relax. A lot of women will deal with pelvic floor pain and the pre and postpartum core specialist certification also allows you to help women that may be having pelvic floor pain that have never even been pregnant in their life or maybe they were pregnant 30 years ago and they are still postpartum. After you have a child, you will always be postpartum postpartum, but you still exercise and can feel better. And there's certain things that is known as what typical for women, but is not normal. So having pelvic floor pain is not normal, but it can be typical for women that are pregnant or after pregnancy, or even having pain with sex after pregnancy. Some women find it to be painful and it doesn't have to be. And you can really fix that with exercise by working with somebody that is certified like myself or going to a physical therapist that is specialized in working with the pelvic floor. And they can go a little bit more in depth with helping like internally versus somebody that is certified like myself will not do internal things with you. And what made you get into this? Because I can already tell that you're extremely knowledgeable.
people with the female body. We're talking about menstruation before, which I think is amazing that you have enough knowledge to understand what the woman is going through so that you can help them along their fitness journey through their monthly cycle. I think that's really amazing. And now you're talking about this other thing, which is also super amazing with this pre and postnatal certificate. So what in your life led you to hone in on this amazing thing? Because I think it's really, really cool. I've never met another personal trainer that has these special skills. And I think they really are very special. I just want to be able to help women as a whole. So before I got the certification, I didn't feel that I was as knowledgeable to help somebody that was pregnant or postpartum. And so I wanted to further educate myself to be able to help other women and really bring that as a whole. So I don't have to just work with younger women that have never been pregnant before. And I can understand how to better help women that have been pregnant. And maybe they're like 50 and they have kids like 10, 20 years ago, and they're still having some problems like engaging their core and they have pelvic floor pain and being able to help them feel better and recognize that you don't have to do these intense core exercises and how to properly engage your pelvic floor and to also engage your core properly as well. A lot of us struggle, even myself, when I was first exercising was how do I even tighten my core to do a core exercise like sit-ups or like a plank and things like that, just very simple exercises. And I didn't understand in the very beginning how to even engage my core. And I've came from there knowing that I wanted to help women understand how to properly do it because it's not something that's easy. You can try and try and try by yourself, but you may still not be doing it correctly. So I think it's important to, it was important to further educate myself so that I could further educate other women as well. The fact that you are not just doing the fad diet, the fad exercise, that's what makes it so special and different. And I think you're reaching a group of women who maybe feel like there's not a space for them and you're creating this space. I also like that you're coming from a standpoint of education because when somebody does a workout, I mean, this was, again, my thing was just like crunches all the time and eat spinach. It's so bad for you. But the fact that you're coming in and you're saying, hey, listen, like food's not scary. You're still beautiful. That pain's not normal. I'm going to show you why. You're giving women the why. And I think sometimes when we're just told the what and we don't understand the why, that connection, that love and understanding that this is really helping you in the end, it doesn't ever show up. It's critical that people start to understand the why behind what they're doing. And you're giving that by educating yourself and then therefore being the teacher and the educator to other women. That was super like emotional for me. I really want to just help women and help change their life. And I, so that's where I always come from is to how, how do you do that? And I think that's from understanding what we really need and it doesn't have to be everybody else. It doesn't have to be this fat thing. It can be a lifestyle thing and just about being a healthier woman and enjoying your life, however that looks to you and being able to do the things that you love and listening and tuning into your body is so, so important in understanding how your body is feeling and figuring out what your body needs at different times. So I would be remiss if I didn't ask, do you find that most women have like one thing that they want to change? Yeah, I think that for most women, it is our stomachs and our bellies. And no matter if it's somebody that wants to lose a lot of weight or a client that is already thin and looks really fit, they still will think about wanting to slim that area down. And I try my best to help them understand that as a woman, it is a beautiful and a wonderful thing for us to have body fat. And it's really good for our hormone health. And so even if you are a woman that is fit, it's still good to have some body fat, especially on your midsection to help protect our 
our reproductive organs and to help regulate our hormone health so that we can be healthy and have this energy to live our lives and not have chronic pain and things like that occurring. If anybody listening can like take something from this, just love your body how it is. It's okay if you have a little bit of extra weight in your belly. It's good for you and you're beautiful the way you are. Well, I would actually love to ask you the question that Emily normally asks because I think it ties into all of this. What advice would you give your 15 year old self? I think that back when I was 15, I had a lot going on in my life, mostly with I think my mental health and I think the best advice that I could give to myself would be it's okay in that you may be having a really hard time, but things are going to get better and you are stronger than you ever can imagine. And just to take things one day at a time. So I'll ask Stephanie as usual question. We'll change it up a little bit. Where can people find you and Do you have any exciting projects coming up besides giving birth to a baby? Because that is just really cool. That's a, that is a project in itself. So you can mainly find me on Instagram. That's where I really like to hang out. And it's Amanda King underscore fit F I T. And that is where I'm mainly at. I also have a website. It is school of fitness 19.com. And through there, you can check out my website, everything that I offer and current programs. And then I'm also on YouTube and share workouts of how to do exercises properly. And you can access that through my website. As far as projects that are coming up, I do have a summer program that is going to be starting here soon. And I'm super excited about that. So that is a low costing 12 week program for women uh, to enter. And that has workouts or chance to be able to work with me closely. And yeah, so I'm super excited about that. We're wrapping up the spring one currently and the women in there are doing amazing. And so I'm super excited to help women get ready for summer. I love that. Amanda, thank you. This has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us and taking time out of your life to be able to share just a little bit, a piece of it with us. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I really enjoyed talking to you both and it's been so emotional for me, like holding back my tears. I really enjoyed talking to you both and I appreciate being on here and I love everything that you guys are doing with this podcast. Thank you. I think we're all going to have a, a lovely cry after we get <laughs> off the call. Good old fashioned shower cry. Yeah. So if you're in the car, if you're cleaning your house, whatever it is, yeah, go have that shower cry. It's totally okay. Sometimes you just get a little emotional. So we hope you sync up with us next time. Bye.